welcome to another exciting podcast from Living Faith Church. It's our hope and prayer that today's message will bring you closer and deeper to the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now here is our lead pastor, Pastor Dean Hackett. The leadership in the nation was weak and uncertain. And and that was causing the enemy forces to believe the weakness of the leadership was opening a door for them. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? The nation's heart and spirit was broken because the spiritual leaders were immoral and greedy. And so the spiritual leadership in the nation was also uncertain, leaving the spiritual climate at a very low ebb. And and all of that mixed together was creating a national crisis. And then that which was least imagined took place. The enemy forces mounted together and brought an attack on the borders of the nation. Nation's military was sent And in the first battle, 3,000 of their military were killed. Dispirited, fearful. They thought, we know what we need to do. Let's get our God in our midst. And so they sent back and they brought the Ark of the Covenant from the tabernacle in Shiloh into the very military camp itself. And so there was the Ark of the Covenant. Go ahead and show the next slide. And they they brought in the Ark of the Covenant into the camp. And when they brought the Ark of the Covenant into the camp, the military began to shout and yell in, in hopefulness, and, and the shout was so great, it even shook the ground. And now the enemy forces were fearful because they went, oh no, their God is in their midst. And what can we do? This is the same God that destroyed Egypt. How can we stand against that God? And the military leaders of the Philistines encouraged their army by saying, come on. You are a victorious army. Remember your victories. Be encouraged. Be strengthened. Come on, be men. And so the next morning, the Philistine army went out to battle with renewed courage. And 30,000 of the Israelites were killed. And the victory was complete. Including the two priests that brought the Ark of the Covenant into the military camp, they were killed. And the Ark of the Covenant was captured by the Philistines. So they're all excited because they not only defeated the Israelites, but they've captured the Israelites' God. They've defeated their God. And so in celebration of that victory, they brought the Ark of the Covenant into the temple of their God, Dagon. This is what he looked like. And they put the Ark of the Covenant in the temple of Dagon before their idol in celebration of not only defeating the army, but in celebration of capturing and defeating the God of Israel, believing their God was greater than the God of the Israelites. So the next morning, when the priests of Dagon come to the temple 
to lead in worship and to make sacrifice. They opened the doors and they walked in and here was the god Dagon fallen off of his pedestal onto his face on the floor before the Ark of the Covenant. That was rather startling to them. But they set the idol back up on his pedestal, did their worship that day, came back the next morning, opened the doors, and when they opened the doors to their shock, the idol Dagon was again fallen off of his pedestal onto the floor on his face before the Ark of the Covenant. But this time, the head of the idol had broken off and the palms of his hands had broken off and they were laying on the threshold. And now great fear came in their God. And not only was that a problem, reports began to come in that a curse was on all of the Philistine cities. Ekron, Gath, not only in Ashdod, but in, in Escalon, in, in all of the Philistine cities, reports were coming in that tumors were growing on the people. They were under a curse. And so they're going, what do we do? What do we do with this God that is so great? And they did a very strange thing. They packaged up the Ark of the Covenant on a cart with a box of gold sacrifices. And they made some interesting gold sacrifices. They made gold mice. I'm sure that really pleased God. And they made images of the tumors out of gold, put it in the box and sent it back to the Israelites. So instead of going, you know what? Their God must be greater than our God. Throw out Dagon, let's worship this God. They didn't do that. They stayed with Ashdod uh, or with, 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 uh, with the God Dagon and sent the Ark of the Covenant of the living God back to Israel. Is that strange to you? But you know what? These same things are happening in America today. Think about it. We're being, we're being defeated at every turn. The education system that used to be number one in the world is now in places 24th in the world. Our economy. We were... We were not a debtor nation. All the nations of the world looked to us and they borrowed their money from us. We are now the number one debtor nation in the world. I I know you're going to hear in the news that we're 24 trillion. You know, I was was sharing this with with, with Pastor David earlier this, this last week. I said... If you were to take one billion, and and we hear the word billion, right, often, you know, for example, they're going to spend $65 billion to repair this, you know, and and we think, we hear it so often, we don't think anything about it. But may I tell you, if we were to go back one billion seconds, It would take us back how many hundreds of years? Do you remember? (laughs) 
1869. One billion seconds. If we were to go back one billion days, it would take us back like into the 1400s. One billion weeks. One billion years. You can't measure it. Because it goes back further than America was created. Or, or the, United, the world was created, right? Not in America, but... Well, America too, I guess, really, yeah. yeah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? One billion. Now, take one trillion. It's unimaginable. I know somebody right now on their phone is already going, is he right? Let's check this out. You know, it, go, go for it. It's amazing to think about. We are 24 trillion with a T in debt. But if you put the off item items on there, because that's just the budget items. What about the non-budget items that we're indebted to? Like Social Security and other things. You start adding that into there, we're over $60 trillion in debt. I mean, it's, it's, an un, it's, it's an unfathomable number. Why, why are we in this condition? Well, it started when we began taking God out of everything. Took God out of schools, took God out of government, took God out of our universities, took God out of our courts. We don't want God anywhere. We've thrown God out. And what have we put in place of it? We've put in place of it evolution. We've put in place of it other gods. I mean, isn't it curious? You can't talk about Jesus Christ in a public school, but you can talk about Mormons and they are, or Muslim. You can Islam. They have to learn. In, when I was doing substitute teaching, they were learning all about the teachings of Buddhism and Hinduism. But I could not talk about Jesus Christ and Christianity. See, when you throw him out and you bring the other idols in, and, and, and how did we get there? Well, it's, it's really curious. Because listen closely. Recent survey, this just came out this last week, that well over the majority of Americans believe in God and, and believe in Judeo-Christian God. And you, you'll see them wearing the cross around their neck and their earring. You'll see them wearing the cross, right? See it, see it regularly. And I love asking people, so, so you, you're, you're, you're wearing that. What, is, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Is that, that must, and I'll, I'll often say it this way. That is a beautiful cross. It must be very significant to you. Share with me. What, what is that significance of that in your life? And it's very blood here. Oh, it's, it's just, it, 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 it was just beautiful, so I, I like wearing it. Or they'll say something like, well, my, my grandma gave it to me, and so I, I, I like wearing it. It's, it's a religious symbol. How many Christians have their Bible out on their table? And yet, Survey after survey by Barna Group and others verifies over and over again that 75% of the men and women in America who say they're a committed believer and who are in church at least two times a month never open their Bible from Sunday to Sunday. It's just on display. It's, it's a religious symbol. And, and that's what was going on Israel has been defeated in this battle and they're going, oh, we, we got to, let's go get the Ark of the Covenant as if the Ark of the Covenant was God. It was just a symbol for God. It wasn't God. It was just a symbol for God. And they brought the Ark of the Covenant into their midst and they can fear, how come we're defeated? How come the Ark of the Covenant got captured? I mean, what happened to our God? Is our God no longer strong and mighty? God is strong and mighty. The Ark of the Covenant was the symbol of his presence. And you brought in the religious symbol, but your heart is far from him. 
Your heart is far from him. They didn't humble their heart at that moment and seek God. They just sought his symbol. They didn't seek him. Is this going deep in your heart? See, God wants your heart. It's nice that you wear his symbol. It's nice that you believe the Bible is his word. But does he have your heart? That's the question. Does he have your heart? Let's jump over to the, to the other side. When they get the ark of God and they bring him before their idol and put him in the temple before their idol. And here's their idol. Boom. What's going on? God is letting them know. You think that box is me. I want to let you know that box is not me. And you can put that box in the temple with your idol. But I want you to know something. Your idol did not defeat me. I'm still the living God. And there's no other. I'm the living God. There's no other. There's no other God. And so God was making it very, very clear to them. You, you may be defeated the people whose heart is far from me. And you may be captured the symbol of my presence. But you didn't capture me. You didn't defeat me. I am still the living God. And I love this. I love this. Why, why when the idol fell did the head break off? Why the head? Because God wanted them to know something. Dagon has a head, but he doesn't have a brain. He doesn't have thought. He does not have wisdom. He is not creative. And I am the living God who in my creative imagination and in my wisdom, I created all of the universe I made the solar system and I made the planet earth so meticulous and so exact. It is the only planet in all of the universe that will sustain life. And I created human life and I made it so exact and so detailed. I created the human eye. And I created the body so unique that the skin on the scalp is different from the skin on the nose. And the skin on the nose is different from the skin on the cheek. And the skin on the cheek is different from the skin on the lips. And the skin on the lips is different from the skin on the tongue. And the skin on the tongue is different from the skin on the chest. And the skin on the chest is different from the skin on the elbow. And the skin on the elbow is different from the flesh that's on the heart. And the flesh on the heart is different from the flesh that's on the stomach. And on and on and on. And God created that and made it exact. And he is the living God. And he wanted them to know the head of Dagon can break off. But my head, you can never crush or defeat I'm creator God and I have eyes and my eyes see and Dagon has eyes but his eyes does not see and my eyes are ever going to and fro across the earth looking for the righteous ones to whom I can show myself mighty and Dagon has ears but he can't hear but I have ears and my ears hear the cry of my people when they will humble themselves and cry to me. And Dagon has a nose, but he can't smell. But my nose enjoys the fragrance of a rose. That's why I made it. And Dagon has a mouth, but he can't speak. But my mouth speaks. And I spoke everything into existence by the word of my power. That which exists and appears is made 
by that which cannot be seen. And my words were spoken and settled before I ever created planet earth. And I gave it to you in my book. And his palms broke off. Why his palms? Two reasons. You ready? Because the palms of his hand cannot reach out and heal. The palm of his hand cannot reach out and bring comfort. The palm of Dagon's hand cannot reach out and save. But God's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. God's hand reaches out and heals and breaks the power of darkness. God's hand reaches out and holds you and comforts you and catch on. And God says he has you in the palm of his hand. And his hand never weakens. And no principality or power, nothing in heaven or in earth or under the earth, no force, no strength, no adversity, no storm, no trial, no tragedy, no heartache, no spirit, no angel can take you from his hand. Because he alone is God. And so here he is, laying on the floor, broken. But the living God is still enthroned. America, where's her God? She's lost him. She doesn't know where he's at. They're trying to find their God in everything they can search for and they can't find him. But stop. There is one place where the living God is made real. It's in the heart of every man, woman, boy, and girl that has been born again and filled with the spirit of the living God. We have the living God in us. He lives in us. And that's why he wants us to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and power. Because he wants his church to go forth in power and might. So that the world can know there is one true living God. There's not many gods. There's one true living God. There's not many ways to him. There's only one way to him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That sounds really exclusive. It is really exclusive. It is singly Jesus Christ. He is the only way. Come on, amen. He's the only way. And Almighty God wants the world to know that He is alive and real and visible and true. How's He going to do that? Through the heart and life of every child of God who says, listen closely, I will not just wear his symbol. I will walk in his power and in his life every day so the world can know the true and the living God through me. You have your phone, you have your iPad, you've, you've got, um, in case somebody's not a Mac person, you have your Android, okay, just, just wanting to be inclusive here, okay. <laughs> and on it, you've got your Bible. Can I tell you? That's awesome. But as you've heard me say before, 
It's not like turning the pages. And so I've got my study Bible that I use each day because I love turning the pages, okay? And there's, there's times in the office I don't, I don't use my Bible program. I got Logos on my PC, but there's times I just, uh, and so I turn around to my library and I get out my concordance and I get out all my other tools and I lay them out across my desk and I love turning the pages. I just, what can I say? I'm old and I'm just, but, I, but I'm a little techie. I'm about that much techie. Anyway, you've got it here. But can I, can I ask you honestly? Do you have it here? Can, can, can the people in your workplace see God in you? See, they've tried all the other gods. And it's left them broken. They're addicted to alcohol. They're smoking a little weed. Maybe, maybe they're secretly on opiates. They're... they're they, they can't deal with life. They're broken. And they want to know that there really is a God that helps them. Maybe they're in a 12-step program. And, and what do they do? Well, they have to have some sort of higher power. I, I heard one guy who was in a 12-step program say, yeah, I got to have a higher power. So it's my doorknob. I thought, Really? So I thought, I'm not going to lose anything else. I looked at him and I said, so when's the last time your doorknob saved you? Let me, let me tell you about the higher power that will save you. He didn't want to hear it. He was, he was, like, he was like the Philistines. Don't, don't, don't tell me about the living God. I'm going to stick with Dagon. Let's send the God who knocked our God off the shelf. Let's, let's send him back to Israel. And let's stick with our God. Let's get him up. Let's get him repaired. Put him all back together. Someone call the mortar guy here and fix our God, will you please? Really? Really? But that's, that's how we're doing it in America. Rather than turning to the living God, we're turning to every other thing. And it's not helping, it's not healing, it's not delivering. But listen to me, church, wherever you go, when you go to the workplace tomorrow, that place is blessed because you're there. You're bringing the living God in you. He lives in you and his power is upon you. Take that power with you. Bring them the healing power and the living power of the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is God. There's no other God but him. And he lives in you. Don't keep it a secret. Stop. Time for commercial. Okay, guys. Get the cards ready. I need as many of our Connect team as possible to help me right now. We're going to get everybody gets five cards. Everybody gets five cards. We're, we're, we're giving out our touch cards again. This, let, let me share with you a couple of stories. You, you, you've got to hear about this. Well, they're getting the cards out. Go ahead, go ahead and listen, listen closely here. So last month when we gave these out, one of our deacons who, who is, drives medical transport picked up this lady, drove her all the way to Portland to a medical appointment, drove her back. On the way back, she goes... You know, I've been thinking about going to church. Have you, have you heard about this church? And she pulls out her touch card and says, Living Faith Church. Somebody gave me this card. He goes, oh yeah, I know about that church. <laughs> what can you tell me about that church? Is that, is that hilarious? Let me, let me show you another. Someone was in Safeway. This just happened just two weeks ago. Someone was in Safeway and the, and the, the, the gal ahead of her was, was paying for some groceries and she took her purse out and she dumped her purse out on the you know, little counter. They dumped her purse out on the little counter there, trying to get all of her money out so she could, she could pay for her groceries. And as, as, she, as she did, out came one of our touch cards. And, and all... What, all, all the gal that attends here, all she could do was just kind of smile to herself and go, yes. And then she saw me just a day or two later and goes, when are we getting more touch cards? I'm out. So I said, 
They're on their way. Be ready. They're on their way, okay? So, so here we go. What am I sharing with you? These little guys, these little guys are so easy to use. I was in Starbucks the other day meeting uh, with, uh, uh, with Pastor Reagan. And we got done and, and he, he headed back out to, to work and, and I was heading out. But while we were talking, this gal had come in and I just, my eyes just kept going to her and Holy Spirit just kept talking to me about her. And so on my way out, she was sitting there and the Holy Spirit says, now, give her a touch card now. So I went by, stopped by, and I said, may I give you one of our touch cards? On the front, it, it gives you our church information. But on the back, you can go to this website and there are 20-minute videos about all the tough questions of life. And they answer... By, by leading people across the nation, they answer. And these videos are very professional, very well done. And they will, you will find answers to the tough questions of life. She was so excited. And it's so simple. Anyone can do this. It's so simple. And I've given them away at gas stations. I've given more than one away at Starbucks. I know that's a great surprise to you. I've given away in grocery stores, in restaurants. I mean, it's so easy. It's so simple. And it's a way to share your faith. Now, here's, here's what will happen. But thank you, Pastor Dave. I, I want you to make sure you have all five of your cards. Here's, here's what will happen. At some point, the opportunity is going to open up for you to be able to tell why you have a hope in your heart. Amen. Can I tell you how Jesus healed my life? Can I tell you how Jesus changed me? Can I tell you how Jesus set my life free? Can I tell you how he's healed our marriage? Can I tell you how, can can I tell you what Jesus has done for me? You get to share how he's not just a God in space somewhere. He's a living God here in my life and he will be in your life too. You can ask him into your life too. Come on. The world needs to know there's one God one true living God and there's only one way to him and that God is alive and real and wants to make a difference in your life. Amen? Yes, amen. Bow your hearts with me in prayer. Heavenly Father you are so real and true. There is no God like you. There is no other God that holds the answers to life but you. And in every person's life in this room, there is someone that needs that answer. And almighty God, may we not be silent. May we not be silent. But may we share our faith. May we share our story. Before I say amen to this prayer, I, I, I got to share with you what happened to me this week. So I get this, I get this message that this person had called, didn't know who they were, didn't know anything about them, just knew that they were a disabled vet. And so I, I returned the phone call and he said, oh, pastor, thank you for calling. And, uh, I said, so 
Uh, what campaign you have read of? Vietnam, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, Iraq. He said, oh, Vietnam. I said, okay, brother, tell me your story. He came back from Vietnam, very damaged, very wounded, very broken. His body just really broken. But he said, I got to tell you, I met the Lord. And he began telling me how he met the Lord and how the Lord made a difference in his life. Because someone, he said, he said, people kept telling me about him. And I met the Lord. As I hung up that phone, God said to me, I'm changing your message for Sunday. Okay, I already had the message 90% prepared. (laughs) God said, I want you I want you to tell them see there are people in your life there are people in your life that need Jesus really really bad he's the only answer See, all the gods of the world have no answer. They can't help them. There, there's no amount of weed that's going to bring them peace. There's no amount of alcohol. It doesn't matter how fine the wine is and how well aged, it's not going to heal them. It doesn't matter how many programs and movies you lose yourself in. It's not going to heal you. Come on. You get what I'm saying? There's no other, there's no other way. There's no one, all the gods that they've tried has not helped them. Education's not going to help them. Education's important. Education is really good. Education is significant, but education doesn't heal the soul and doesn't heal the body. Only Jesus Christ. And you've got the answer. And someone like this disabled vet is waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Will you take those five cards and hold them in your hand right now? Now we're going to close the prayer. Here we go. Get ready. Father... These five cards, they're they're simple. They're just printed cards. But they're a bridge to the answer of life. And I am praying for five divine appointments for every person in this room over the next couple of weeks. Five divine appointments. That almighty God, they will get to share the card, but also God, there will be those that will say, tell me more, tell me your story. And they get to share how Jesus, you made a difference in their life. We are so blessed that you join us online today. For more resources on how you can grow your relationship with Jesus Christ, visit us online at www.winacity.com. If you would like to speak with someone about your relationship with Jesus Christ or would like prayer, you can contact us at 541-567-4486 or email us at info at